This is an introduction to adding and subtracting rational expressions. So first of all, um, what do we need in order to be able to add or subtract two fractions, or two rational expressions for that matter? I mean, rational expressions are fractions. So what do we need if we're going to add or subtract two fractions? We need a common denominator. That's like the big important thing about fractions when we add or subtract them is that they must have a common denominator. And rational expressions, which are a special type of fraction, also need a common denominator. It's not as easy as it sounds. Um, normally, with everything, we always do addition and subtraction before we look at multiplication and division, except for rational expressions. Rational expressions, the multiplication and division was actually a little bit nicer. Um, not to say that addition and subtraction is not nice, it's just it can be complicated, let's say. So I do have suggested steps for adding and subtracting rational expressions. First of all, what we want to do is we want to factor the denominators. So first, factor all the denominators. We do not want to factor the numerators. Please don't factor those. Leave the numerators alone. Don't touch the numerators yet. Leave them alone. OK, once uh, the denominator are all factored, now we want to identify the least common denominator. And least common denominator, I'm going to call it LCD. LCD is least common denominator. We don't want to just find a common denominator. If, we're, if it was just numbers, I would say, whatever, you can just use whatever. But with these rational expressions, it will get very complicated. You want to specifically find the least common denominator. You don't want extra factors down there. I promise you don't. So you want to identify the least common denominator. Then you need each fraction to have that least common denominator. So we need to rewrite all rational expressions Uh, rewrite all rational expressions with the LCD. So you need to multiply the numerator and denominator by any factors that are missing. Okay, so when we do that, right, we multiply, right, we multiply the missing pieces. Leave the denominators factored. You have that common, the common denominator, they all have that common denominator, you can combine them into one. Leave the denominator factored. What you do want to do is you do need to simplify the numerators now. So the numerators might have these additional pieces being multiplied to them. So we want to simplify the numerators. If that means applying the distributive property, apply the distributive property. Once the numerators are simplified, now we want to combine like terms in the numerator. So this includes distributing uh, and simplifying. Once it's simplified, check to see if the numerator can be factored. Check if numerator can be factored. Because just like with fractions, if you add or subtract them, you want to make sure that it's in simplest form. We have to do the same thing here. So if it can be factored, factor it. Then look to see if you can simplify it. Simplify, I'm going to say simplify the fraction because I'm using that word simplify a lot and I get that it can be confusing. Here I'm talking about distributing and, and combining with terms. Here I'm talking about simplify the fraction. So look for, do the numerator and the denominator have any common factors? And if they do, factor those out. If they don't, then you can just end at step five. 